Hi, I'm Keith Decent, and today we're going to build this, uh, this plywood hatchet handle and restore the hatchet underneath it while we're at it. As you can see, when I got this thing, it was in pretty rough shape. I did a little sanding just to reveal what was under the grime, but really not much was salvageable from the handle because it was wrapped in electrical tape for probably 25 years. The tape, while holding the handle together, as you can see, also just created a moisture barrier that kept moisture in and just rotted out the wood and made lots and lots of rust. So first things first, let's get this handle off. This handle is what you call a perfect handle style. It's a way tools were built in kind of mid-century and before where the metal of the tool would go down between the handle and the handle is really basically just two scales like a kitchen knife. And here you can kind of see the skeletal inside of the handle, the steel part. Uh, I don't have a wire wheel, so a drill clamped upside down with the trigger clamp is, is good enough for me. It works, as you can see. What I'm going for here is not a perfectly shiny, brand new looking hatchet. This thing has done work. It's weathered. I want it to look that way. But I also want it to be clean and usable. So while not doing major reconstructive surgery, I just want the old man to look good in a new suit, you know? Clean him up, polish him up a little bit. Okay, now for the handle, I had this idea. There's this other YouTube creator named Michael Alm of Almfab, A-L-M-F-A-B. You should go check him out if you haven't. It's a crime that you're watching my channel and not his. So he does what's called pattern plywood projects a lot, and he's really good at it. And he did one that inspired me, which has this pattern called like Alpine Peaks. It's kind of like a mixed houndstooth and chevron pattern. It's really cool. In order to do it, you got to cut some plywood, high quality plywood. I think Baltic birch because those are the scraps I had lying around. You cut a 45 on one end. You leave the other end with a little bit of a chamfer and you glue them together down the center like this and you get like a V shape, a really long extruded V. Uh, Mike uses rubber bands for his. I've seen people use kind of spring clamps and blue tape. I had packing tape lying around. It worked just fine. It didn't stick or anything. It didn't ruin anything. So, you know, as long as you roll it real tight and make sure that the shape is good and everything lines up, you're, you're good. You let that dry up for at least five, six hours. I did mine overnight and you can come over and slice it. You can do this on a cross cut sled on the table saw. You can do it with a hand saw and a miter box if you're real careful. I just put a little pencil mark on my uh, chop saw here and just cut them into one inch bits. This little uh, clamping jig is basically just some plywood with packing tape over it so that the glue doesn't stick to it. It's got two loose sides on the bottom and the top so that I can clamp it all together. After sanding the pieces down, you add glue to the sides that'll touch and you start arranging your pattern. And then after that, you clamp it up and uh, I had to add a little bit to the bottom right side just for the handle shape after this and I didn't get that on camera but when I pull it out you'll see the difference. That's what he said. It seems it could be really tedious but honestly the pattern plywood's kind of fun at every stage when you see this thing getting built up and everything you think is boring about doing pattern plywood not really that boring. So again I don't really do a lot of axe craft or, or, or fine metal work like this so I don't have wire wheels and polishing wheelie dealies. I got a Dremel, and I've got a whole bunch of bits I found in a flea market bin. And really, I just put my best guesswork to use on what to use where and in what, in what stages. And the thing turned out good. Also, I learned how to whistle over the pandemic, as you can hear. And now I can't stop. It's crazy. I can't stop doing it. Please help. Demolding this thing was super satisfying. Uh, as you can see, I added three pieces to the bottom for the curve of the bottom of the handle. And wow, it came right off the mold and it looks so good. Just picked up this drum sander from an estate sale, so let's use it. I'm running it through here a couple times, really just to flatten it out, because my pieces weren't cut to the exact same, uh, you know, length everywhere, because I wasn't that precise about it. Because I knew I had this tool, and it worked out great. You can use a belt sander if you clamp this down. You can use a random orbit sander. You know, at the end of the day, you don't have to have to use any of this. If the piece is stable enough to cut the shape that you need out of it, you can just skip this step and go straight to the shaping. So I traced the handle shape onto it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut outside that shape because eventually I'm just going to sand this flush with the handle so I want a little extra sticking out the side so I get the shape right. I'm 
there was something really satisfying about cutting this uh, pattern plywood out on the bandsaw. It's it's weird because usually you cut raw materials and cutting something that you've already basically manufactured is pretty cool. So what I'm doing here is a trick I've learned from a few YouTubers, including Jimmy Duresta, who you may know. Uh, it is a tape template because the inner bevel, that, that cavity on this, this handle is there. I didn't want to have to route the same pattern on the bottom of my handle scale, the piece of plywood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 1 8 inch flat and then glue it to the bottom. So you're going to see that here. I've already had this stock milled out for other projects. It's tape template, cut, bandsaw cut. You'll see. And this is just some black walnut that I had lying around from another project. I had already milled it out, so I figured I might as well use it. And I think it'll make a nice contrast since you're only really going to see it at the bottom and the very, very tippy top of the handle. I made it so it's a little bit proud because I'm going to glue it to the bottom and clamp it into the handle so the positioning is right. Now, if it was a little bit le uh, too shallow, it might move around in there. But because it's not, I'll get a good gluing surface and good pressure up against it. Alright, so it's time to flush the handle up to the metal bits. And eh, this is a little out of order. You can see one there that I've already done and it looks really cool. But pretend you can't see it. Pretend for a minute that you just can't see that one. And you're still in a state of wonder about what's about to happen. Because what's about to happen... It's pretty damn wonderful. And now to sit in front of the oscillating belt sander for a good 30 minutes, just shaping this up, flushing it out, really making it good. And when you're sitting there doing a repetitive task like this for so long, I, I like to listen to podcasts. And I've got a podcast. It's called From the Ground Up. Uh, it is the story of how we make stuff. It's a scripted podcast in which I tell you the interesting stories behind the everyday things we use to build things and stories of some of the really cool builds anyway clean up your spot because it's time to move after the rough shaping on the oscillating belt sander taking it 80 120 220 to a 400 grit on the random orbit sander and this is a cool little trick Sharpen the front of a dowel, chuck it up into your drill, and if you got a hole in a piece of metal that you need to make a dowel for, because it's an off size that you don't have, watch this. Spin it, a little bit of pressure, and look at that. You got a dowel exactly the right size for that hole. And why do I need a dowel with the right size for that hole? Well, because I don't want through pins on this handle. I want it to look complete and uninterrupted i love this pattern so much so i'm going to do kind of a captured pin with oak dowels they're very strong this is more of a hanging showy piece this handle will last like a while if it's taken care of if you if, if you'd want it to work with it however it is not an everyday workhorse on the farm thing and if you came here expecting like an everyday workhorse axe that has this kind of handle then i don't know what to tell you get used to disappointment because you are naive anyway the dry fit is super tight uh you can actually use a thing like this probably for a little while before the handle fell apart so measurements are good everything's nice it's time to glue this bad boy up and get it done and it's time for the real glue up and as you can see these fit really tightly and really well i have to use lineman's pliers to get them out there's no wiggle this handle's not going anywhere a couple dabs of glue Get those dowels back in there. I probably could have cut this up a little better, but it's too late now because I'm doing the voiceover. Snappy, snappy, tappy, tappy, and we've got ourselves a handle. Eventually. When I get there. Oh, don't drop it, ding that. There we go. And squeeze. All right, look at that. And it's a bit of a beefier handle than the old one was because this is a Boy Scout hatchet and I'm a Man Scout and I have Man Scout hands. So, I gave it a little better. I'm going to shut up now and just let you enjoy this part. I'm just going to say that this is uh, Wipe On Poly.
Okay, I'm not gonna shut up that much because this thing is gorgeous. Look at that, that honey gold color, that sheen it's got to it, man. I mean, it, it looks good on this video, but in real life, it, it just blew me away. It took my breath away. It was amazing. And of course, I had to Instagram it because it looked so good right after I put the finish on it. And you know, speaking of Instagram, if by chance you have an Instagram, I'm on there. I don't know if you know that. Uh, I'm Keith Decent on Instagram. I'm Keith Decent everywhere. I made sure of that. Uh, you know, I don't talk as much there. I just post lots of pictures of projects and, and shorter videos in which I do not speak. So if that's a thing that you're into, uh, you can go on over there and follow me. Or, you know, you could just stay here and criticize my axe sharpening technique in the comments. It's, it's okay. It does not define me as a person. It's not something I care about. Put a little butcher's wax on it to keep it from rusting. And normally I don't wax the handle of a tool, but since it's so close to the metal, I just, I just kept on buffing. Oh, man, just look at that thing. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. But I'm very proud of it. So I'm taking the time to tell you a little bit about this hatchet. It's like a mid-century Boy Scouts of America branded hatchet. And as you can see, the scout punched his name into it. I found it at a flea market and immediately fell in love, even though it was in shit condition. Made in Bridgeport, Connecticut by the Bridgeport Hardware Manufacturing Corporation. Got the patent dates. All these stamps are in great shape. For how bad it was, it was actually in really good shape. Ha! <laughs> at ax Actually. Actually. Now let's put it to the test. I'm just kidding. This, this is not that channel. It's not that channel. This is not that scene in the bodyguard where she holds the samurai sword up to him and as like a joke and it's not a joke because it's super sharp and she doesn't know that so he has to show her so he takes off her scarf and lets it drape gently over the blade of the sword and it cuts itself open under its own weight and then she gasps and then like they do it this is not that it's just me <laughs> 